Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Ask Mary Adams. And I am so excited to introduce you to my guest, Marianne St. Clair. And I met Marianne, I don't even know how many years ago it was. It was a long time ago when I first started on Facebook. And Marianne and I not only became friends, but we became mentors to one another as we expanded our own consciousness and learned to expand and use different tools and practice being present with each other as life happened and having the opportunity to grow as practitioners together out in the world. And so it's really exciting for me to have Marianne here and hear what she's working on next. Marianne, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Mary. I just have to clarify one thing. You and I met back in the beginning Twitter day. What? Oh my gosh. The beginning of Twitter. Back when like the plane came in and, you know, landed in the harbor and we were like, wow, this is really trippy. This is happening right now. Here we can communicate about something live. So it's been that long, even before Facebook day. Wow, that's so, amazing. Hmm. This journey has been great. And for me to sit there and, you know, in our conversations and in our dialogue, to see the relatedness and as each one of us grew was amazing. You know, talking about every aspect of life from, you know, illnesses to rebirthing to um, sexuality, sensuality, and how we kind of mirrored each other was just really phenomenal, I thought. You know, it as we are kind of... Oh, so sorry. It's so powerful to have that mirror in your life and someone that you can be truly authentic and open with. And that's something that you and I, it's a big gift in our relationship and how Absolutely. we have that conscious model that, and even though you're in Florida and I'm where I am in the world, it doesn't matter how far away we are. We're always to always able to reconnect to the, at that point. And that we've never physically been in each other's presence yet. Yeah. But it's coming. It you is. Know? It's coming. <laughs> I know it is. I know it's going to come together like this, you know, and I just, I so wait to just be in your gushy, feminine, divine self's presence. And I know it's coming. It is soon, yeah. very soon. So Marianne, um, I want you to take the opportunity to tell everybody about what you do and who you are. Wow, it's been a journey. And so what I feel and on the cusp of this full moon and, you know, the emergence of the way the energies are changing my energy and my gift that I've sort of been feeling in the background for quite some time, but just now I feel it's just Marianne, you've got to come out and you've got to really be this for the world because the world needs it. So who I am is a muse. And the best way I can describe that, you know, there's many different versions that we kind of talk about, you know, there's the nine muses that in Greek mythology that sort of birthed in different things like science and, and music and, but I feel there's a new essence of who I am bringing forth to the world. Kind of, you know, one one person you can think about is Marilyn Monroe, who she was for several of the key um, presidential, you know, advisors or the president of the United States. And But really what I feel that I bring is the divine feminine to maximize the divine max, masculine. And what that means is for me, the create the creativity, the um, sensuality, touching, feeling, the beauty that is on this planet, really bringing forth some light to those things, um, so that that we can I can spark that in the masculine, so I can spark that it's in there, but maybe they through being in my presence and being connected to me, they can really, um, they don't have to bring it forth. Like they don't have to get all touchy feely themselves and they don't have to begin to focus on the more feminine aspects of life, but they have that connection to be able to do that. 
And so um, how I feel also is that the masculine, um, the gift is to bring things to action, is to bring things forward and make it happen. So if I can be of service in a way that gets them in touch with their heart and then through my connection, they can take it and run and get things into action and make a huge difference in this world. So I really want to um, lend my service to key, you know, influencers and um, people that have, can make a huge shift and a huge, if they take action in this way. Um, so who knows, who knows what's possible through this new, you know, it's different than coaching that we've been doing for a long time. Um, it's a definitely a more merging the two, the masculine and the feminine together. So, so let's um, talk about that. Let's talk about the merging the masculine and feminine together. And this is, and, and one of your topics and one of your main pieces is from boardroom to bedroom. And I would like you to first explain what that is, and then let's dive into that divine masculine and feminine energy and how we bring that together, because this is one of those topics. Relationships, y'all, you know, it's a place where I think everyone I've ever met has struggled. It's a place where there are very unclear understandings about what a woman really is and what a man really is, and the understanding from the opposite sex of, of how, to, how to understand that and how to connect with that. Wonderful. <laughs> so the boardroom to the bedroom, um, that's a little voice that, you know, I've heard in my, and a, a words that I've heard in a, for so long. What that means to me is, that we try, we try to compartmentalize our life so often. You know, what I do over here in my personal life is different than what I do over here in my business life. Or, you know, I have to put on one hat over here and it doesn't affect what happens over here. And I got to tell you, it goes across the board. How you're showing up with your relationships in the bedroom is how you're showing up in your relationships in the boardroom. And if you are coming from the approach of being a very masculine dominant leader and not a heart-centered leader, a heart-centered leader can lead across the board. They bring their heart into their relationships in their personal life as well as in their professional life. But when we take whether or not it's a male or female because a lot of times you see the female crossing over and and they've had to they've want they've thought they've had to become very masculine put on their pants suit up and go into the man's world and become more masculine so that they could compete in the man's world well there's one thing that's very wrong there is compete they're in the competitive world versus the collaborative world. And the collaborative world is where you can couple and join the masculine and feminine versus competition where they're pressing up against each other and there's, that's where wars and that's where divorces and ending relationships happen is when you're you know, trying to compete for power. And so what I would like to offer is that we don't need to compete with power. We need to honor each other and come from and lead from love. And then that is where the juicy, luscious um, fullness of life can occur in our relationships and business. So I wanna ask, so obviously that comes from both sides of the spectrum. 
that comes from a male perspective and a female perspective where there are there is that competition going on who's in charge and and i think the media and a lot of other you know pieces have empowered women which is wonderful it's wonderful to be empowered and that's i want to make sure that that's not what we're saying here no. what we're talking about is we're talking about the competition between a man and a woman as far as how energetically we come forward and men and women are very differently different they're biologically very different we think different we act differently and so what i want to ask you marianne is when you're coming up when you're in a relationship a man and a woman or two people a woman and a woman a man and a man two people who are coming together and there is competition in that relationship how do you maneuver that because that's, I think, one of the biggest problems for most people. So let's, I'm going to separate two things for you. Because I think we have gotten really into the place of thinking that um, male and female, which is the, the body, the, the um, physical form, is different than masculine feminine okay so we're thinking that you know it's weak for a man to be feminine but a man has feminine qualities in him but they're suppressed and a female has masculine qualities in her but she's you know, she's building on those and maybe leaving the feminine qualities on the side and she's not really fully come into the dance of the, the interplay of the masculine and feminine within the male and the female. So we've got to separate what we're talking about here. First off, we've got to separate the male, female versus masculine, feminine energy because we both have them within us. So that being said, going on into your question of how do we take and honor both the masculine and feminine within us is first and foremost. We have to realize that we have both. We're not just masculine, we're not just feminine. And then to be able to come from that place of you know what each one has a place and i can honor the masculine in her because she gets things done in my life you know she's the silent one back here that's very powerful that brings her creativity to my life and the womb and the you know that birthing of new things and she handles making sure you know my um the beauty and brings artistic things to make sure the house is very aesthetically pleasing and all of those kind of things. But then again, it might be the male who does those things and the female may go to work and, you know, puts on her more masculine essence and goes. So it is separating the roles of male, female versus masculine and feminine. Does that make sense, Mary? It absolutely does. And the balancing of that, I think, is different for every relationship. Because well, we I all come into, you know, we're all raised differently. We all have learned life from different perspectives and what different energies are comfortable with. And I think that that's a piece that's it's actually quite essential in, when you're trying to create a conscious relationship is really talking about that. You know, who whose energy needs to be in each place and where are you comfortable in that energy so that, so that it's known it's, you know, it's respected. Well, I think it's even understanding because I think we're just getting to that place of even understanding and separating that there is a difference between a masculine and feminine energies versus a male and female. And I think in, in the relationships, communication is key. And I think when we can play with these different energies and play with it within ourselves, 
and then really get to the place of not where we've come from and where all of our past, because there's so many different things that, you know, a lot of us practitioners say heal from. And I kind of get to the place where healing is only a place of transformation and it's only like moving something, moving the box around. And it's really never getting to that place of liberation from those old patterns and those old things. So what I would like to offer is, you know, in my programs and in my work is a place of liberation from those things. So you can get to that fullness of yourself and your ability to be with another and your ability to come from love versus all those patterns that you've been, um, that you've learned that, you know, and learning is a long process and I want to sort of offer you, you know, a new, just, we don't have to go through all that. It's been years that we've been working on that transformation. Let's get past that and get into this liberated, uh, liberated love where, you know, we can be fully present with another and love. So let's, let's talk a little bit about patterns, because I think that's a really important aspect of this is that, you know, we, we fall into patterns because we've learned, number one, we've learned them from birth. We watch the people around us and we assume that that's the way to live when we're little. And so we are monkeys and we repeat that pattern and we, you know, show the world, this is who I am. And oftentimes we don't understand what our own operating systems are. And so, Marianne, how do you, so say that you have negative patterns, how would one go about identifying that within a relationship? Well, first, I think you, if you're coming from that competitive place, then you, you're not present and you're running off of a pattern, you're running off of a belief. If you're coming from fear, if you're coming from the place of, um, being unconsciously, um, present, you know, it's, it's a difference of also being in your head versus being in your heart. So many of us, the, I feel that patterns get created because the mind has to create in this linear time and space, the mind has to create another another parameter, another definition, another way of defining who we are or, but when you're not there, when you're in the fourth dimension, when you're in the place of unconditional love, then you're not letting those patterns even have, they, they're just not, they, they're not running you then when you can be from the place of fourth in unconditional love, unconditional love, why we've never been able to get to it in the third dimension is because it's not possible. There's always the patterns. There's always that, you know, moving the box around and trying to, um, trying to figure out, you know, what's the next pattern. And then there's another layer of it. And then there's another layer of it. But it's really getting to that place of in your heart, in the present moment, in the fourth dimension, and then you've got access to infinite possibilities. And that's where the liberated love is. So if you're in that duality of patterns, you're not in liberated love. You're not, you know, you're operating from a place that is like the monkey mind that you're never going to get out of. So a couple who is watching this or, you know, and and this is also very applicable to everybody. This is about parenting. This is about um, relationships with other family members, friends, coworkers, your children. I mean, this is infinite. This is about every relationship that you have. Yourself, too. First and foremost, your relationship with yourself. Exactly. And so, Marianne, when, you know, so a couple who might be watching this or some people who might be watching this, they say, well, you know what, I'm ready for that next step. And 
this is this is definitely something that I would love, but the current relationships I I am in don't have that dynamic. So for someone who might be watching who's interested in making a change, do, does that mean they have to dump the person they're with and find somebody new? No, it's about themselves first and foremost. Hmm. And it's about the relationship with their self. You know, I find so often, you know, that our relationship with ourself is where we must begin. And if you're not, I love, um, Layla and I were talking, that's my youngest daughter, and we were talking on the way home. And she said, Mom, you know, I found that when that little voice comes in and tells me, you know, I'm not beautiful or tells me I don't look good today, she goes, I have to slap it on the hand and I have to tell it to, you know, stop it. And she said, she goes, Mom, you know, and that voice that RuPaul, that drag race, the, the famous RuPaul, um, says is if you can't love yourself, you can't love another. Mm. First and foremost place that we need to get to is can we be just ourselves? Can we liberate ourselves to live without our own judgments? Because our own judgments is what keeps us frozen. It's what keeps us where we are. It's not somebody else's judgments. It's our own judgment on whether or not we're good enough or whether or not we're, um, we're worthy or um, whether or not we're lovable or all those things. It, it's our own essence that we need to um, free and be able to speak our minds when we want to and share what we want to and dance if we want to, take our clothes off and run through the streets if we want to. You know, freedom. because freedom to be, yes, freedom to be and be self-expressed. And, you know, it's a little scary being a muse, you know, because I remember 15 years ago when I was called to bring in coaching and, you know, I had everybody, family and everybody go, have you joined a cult? What have you done? You know, what is <laughs> What is this thing? We don't understand it. We don't know what it is. It's not definable. It's not in our world. We don't know. And I remember my stepmother until she saw it in the Tampa Tribune, Tribune and she sent me a copy of the paper. She didn't feel that it was real. And so now in this, you know, dance of allowing myself to truly be the the expression of love that I'm being called to serve the world with is just liberating. It's just, I've sort of like gone, oh, you know, I don't know. Is the world ready for it? And now it's like, here I am, you know? And that's what I want others to do. And that doesn't mean you have to leave who you're with. Does not mean you have to leave your job. It may mean you may leave the person you're with because you may find that they're not on the same resonance with you. And when you really can allow yourself to be self-expressed and you're maybe resonating with a 600 megahertz and they're at a 150, that only creates wah, 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 and it doesn't create harmony. It doesn't make it this beautiful, you know, expression. Um, and, and we are just vibration. So finding those things, liberating ourselves to the point of being able to be, you know, is wonderful. Well, totally. And, and the other side of that is being able to hold that space for another. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest disconnections I see in the world is I, I'll be with different groups of people or I'll be in a place and I see people judging one another and looking them up and down or making a snide comment or, or, or sticking their opinion in where it doesn't matter or instead of just hearing and listening and being present and allowing that person to be without your comment, without your commentary, without your judgment, without your frustration, without anything. And, and there's, I see relationships break up, you know, from people who come to me through my coaching practice every day over the toothpaste cap and how she said, can you please put it on? 
I have seen more divorces over that. And the, and, and the truth is, is that's not really what it's about. It's about, are we able to speak our truth, number one? Can the other person hold that space and allow us to do it? And number three, are we willing to speak our truth in a way that honors and respects one another? Yes. And, and, it's, that's, and, and that's a big thing between men and women and, and couples. And anybody, anybody, friends, friends. Several of my friends have said, you know, we've kind of had some really deep conversations. And you kind of go, I had one who said, you know, I, I really had to think of whether or not I felt comfortable being able to share. And she said that, you know, I give her that space and she really values that because it's so not the norm of being able to have somebody hold the space to just listen without reacting, without, you know, already listening from the point of something's wrong, something's missing, something's broke, fixing it, whatever, reacting in defense mechanism, you know, of, oh my gosh, there's an attack on, on who I am rather than just being confident in who you are and inviting that person. Yeah, you can share. And gosh, I might learn something from this. I might learn that really how I could love you more is putting that cap on the toothpaste. I'm not hearing you from the perspective of it would really help me and it would really show me that you loved me if you would put the cap on. But if we're worried about they're going, oh, they're trying to control me, they're trying to exert energy over me, they're trying to, you know, engage in the battle and the masculine is attacking the masculine. And, and it's really, if you were listening, you would hear what she really wants is to be loved. And the way you can show her that is by putting the cap on the toothpaste. And Marianne, and I'm really... And I think part of that really listening and also being able to really share is being able to say the hard things, <clears throat> being able to say, I'm not comfortable right now. Please help me understand where we're at or I, or this is a deal breaker for me. And instead of becoming angry and, and hiding it and, oh my God, I can't believe he's doing that again. You go and lovingly say to the other person, you know, you being on Facebook on your phone all the time, it's not okay with me. That doesn't work. We need to do something different. So, you know, taking the scenario, whatever is happening that's creating the disconnection and really, and, and, and the other piece of that is being able to accept that and have someone come to you and say, and really be able to listen and understand that they are coming from their perspective. They're coming from their story. They're coming from their agreement. It's never an attack on you. It's their perspective. Right. And they're allowed to have that. So something you were speaking into is what I call uncoupling. And conscious uncoupling is when we do know that it's time to go. When, when we can honor that this just is not in alignment with me. That is theirs and that's okay. But when we consciously uncouple, we can honor the fact that the relationship is good. The relationship is not what serves me. So what I can do is move forward in love and, and not run from the pain and what's and, and, you know, leave in a very unconscious way of anger, resentment, pain, frustration, but leave in a way that is loving. Now, breakups are not the easiest thing to do, but when you can come from the place of the heart and move forward in a, in a place that honors both in a loving way and having a discussion and maybe the person can't hear you and maybe they're going to come from the place of she's only doing that to me, but it's how you approach it. It's how you come from the place of honoring the other person, not by attacking and throwing threats and, 
but saying, you know, this isn't working and I need to make a change. And, and being interested in asking the question, what do you need and how can I help? Yeah. Just that statement alone. And because a lot of times, you know, when you're sharing with somebody else or, or, or anything that's going on, any time that you need to connect with somebody, the, that statement alone, you know, they don't need nothing, anything, but they know that you have their back. They know that you're interested in their highest and best good, and they know, and you're giving them an opportunity to ask. And to, you know, I, I'm, pardon me, you're giving the opportunity for them to share, the opportunity for them to be authentic and say, I need this. And then for you to be able to honor them by helping them receive that. And, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the friendships and relationships that I have, I always have this conversation of, you know what, we're not always going to be on the same path. We're not always going to be doing the same thing. There's going to be things that I do in my life that you probably won't agree with and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And you know what, I've got your hand and we're on the path and I'm going to support you in having the life experience that you desire, even if it's not mine. Mm -hmm. And that's a big place to come in any relationship. Because that means that you are really trusting that the person knows what they're doing and what's best for them. Yeah. Because isn't that where the wisdom is anyway? I mean, when we're, when we're coming from the place of being the guru and the person that knows the answers, then we're not even present to the other person. So we can ask questions, but all the information comes from them. And even in the difference from coaching to musing of asking and pulling, you know, the wisdom forward in musing, it's really already knowing that it's all perfect and fine and it's all in its infinite wisdom. And then it's just tapping into the infinite possibility. So it's, um, it's a little different um, in the place that, it resonates from, you know, coaching versus musing. Um, and I find that, you know, when you can hold that space for the world, when, you know, I feel that being an expression of divine feminine, you know, you brought up something a minute ago where we, where you were talking about, um, you know, the, the, the push pull going back and forth in relationships. I think, you know, that's when either one is trying to get power from the other and they feel that their power is being taken away. But when you can come into that place of your own empowerment, your own essence, your fullness of who you are, there's no power struggle anymore. Nobody's trying to take anything from you. You are willing to give because your cup is full. And that's the place that I feel, you know, coming from at this time is not from a place of sacrifice or, you know, that I'm giving from an empty place where everybody's trying to take, but it's at a place of, I have an unlimited spring that I'm tapped into source and it can flow through me and all the, you know, clients or anybody that wants to work with me, come just tap in and you can, you know, experience, maybe you're not, you know, quite where I am, but you just have to tap in. And that's um, a little different than the transformation and stuff of coaching. It's a little different of just come get, as I hear over and over from my clients is um, I just needed a Marianne boost. And that's just, you know, kind of like, take me up some megahertz. My energy's low right now. Yeah. I just needed to tap in and then, you know, oh my gosh, my energy was um, higher. Or, you know, I hear I just needed to tap in so I could get that spark of refreshing energy. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Marianne, I, we've got a few minutes left, but I want to take a moment to talk about a part of this topic that, and we're going to have to come back and talk about it, you know, in fully, but 
Love we were you. talking about the defeminization and the demasculinization in relationships. And I think that's a really important piece that I would like you to share, you know, before we end. Well, it's happened for, you know, a lot of mothers have really emasculated their little boys and so have fathers, you know, and um, they've really disempowered them from the time that they were young. And I see even fathers um, defeminizing and scaring their daughters, you know, that men are bad, men are horrible, um, they're, you know, they're only after one thing. Um, so, and then feminine, you know, even the, let's get to the feminine in a male. The feminine in a male has been, stop being a sissy, stop crying, you know, quit, quit worrying about your feelings, toughen up, get out there and get going. So the, the feminine in the, ma in the male has really been suppressed. Um, the masculine in some males has been suppressed and that's where, you know, they can really flourish in their feminine. Um, but yet they may be to the point where they can't really um, take action on their goals, but they can go and paint and be very creative artists, but yet they can't ever quite get their businesses going um, because they have been emasculated when they were young. Um, feminine, so much um, dishonoring is still even going on today that the, you know, that the masculine is just taking advantage of the feminine in ways of rape and pillaging and um, that if they really knew what we brought to them and that they don't have to take it, but they just have to honor us and, and listen and come from the place of sharing um, and, and knowing that we will freely give it when we feel supported, loved, honored, that there's just a wealth. We can't wait to give our feminine essence. We can't wait to give you know, that, um, that inspiration and tapping into what love, you know, that juicy um, lusciousness that we feel when we're in a fresh relationship, that can carry on. But if we're not honored by putting the top on the top toothpaste, if we're not honored by, you know, bringing us some flowers or laying the bed you know, and making something um, pretty for us to feel valued in the relationship. And the same with the masculine as women can feel that the, the man is there to protect and serve and, and make sure everything's okay. But if we're telling him he's not doing it right and he's, he doesn't give enough and he's uh, just you know, not um, listening all the time or just in any way that we're cutting him down and making that little boy in him feel worthless and a piece of crap, we're not going to break through this if we're not honoring the other. And we've got to honor it in ourselves. Yeah. So... I think it's the key to love, Mary. It's the key to really making this world a better place. You know, this, this dance and interplay of the masculine and feminine, um, to me, just light, will light up the world. It is the light. Because you cannot have one without the other. Could you imagine what we're seeing right now the play out of masculine and how it's, it's really um, battling itself because and until that sort of implodes where there isn't a battle anymore, that there's this refreshing um, ability to not over dominate, but then we can collaborate. I'm what a different sure. world that is. And this, this concept, this idea, this, this topic changes the world. 
one yeah. relationship at a time with your child, with your neighbor, with your coworker, with your partner, with your spouse, with your mom, with your dad. It really changes everything. And it's, and truthfully, it's not that far of a jump. It's not that far of a leap to take. And it's about being conscious and remembering, remembering being in practice. Yes. Fabulous. Gosh, I just love this conversation. So, Marianne, we've run out of time. And so what I want, of course, you'll be back. And what I'd like to do is give you an opportunity to tell everybody how they can connect with you. Super. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you for this time. I want to honor you and having me here today because it's always a pleasure and namaste. Um, you can connect with me. My website is boardroom to bedroom dot net um, it's in the infancy it's beginning to be really coming alive so keep abreast there and uh, there'll be workshops um, I don't want to call them workshops but workshops is what we've defined and then also there's an opportunity to um, be on retainer with me so that you can call me and tap into my energy at any time. Um, I have that available um, also. There's different levels of that. Um, and then also they can find me on Facebook at Boardroom to Bedroom, discussing life's infinite top, intimate topics, excuse me. And then also Marianne St. Clair. You can find me on um, Twitter and on Facebook. And let me spell that because it's a little different, Mary. It's M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E. St. Clair, S-T-C-L-A-I-R. With the links I'm sure Mary will have below or she'll have posted. Um, I've got some up and coming wonderful workshops on the interplay of the divine masculine and feminine. And you know, this is really good for that corporate leader who's in charge of a big corporation because Mary, the filter down effect when he changes will change the whole company. So I'm talking thousands and thousands of people. Um, so if you know somebody, you know, have them contact me or Mary and because I'm just so excited to bring this forward. Thank you so much, Mary Ann. And thank you everybody for listening and watching. And we hope that you will join us again. And you can find more about me at www.askmaryadams.com. And you are listening on the Co-Creator Network. And we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.